Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to index an Illustrator file um, in, in Photoshop using a palette. Alright, so we're going to grab the file that we're going to use. This is an AI file, so an Illustrator file. Drag it into Photoshop. Um, you want to make sure anti-alias is clicked off. Um, if this is clicked on, it kind of makes the edges a little fuzzier between the colors. It kind of, it's meant to make the colors blend together and look nice, um, but for color adjusting purposes, you always want to have that clicked off. So the rest looks pretty good. Let's click OK. Okay, so in order to index an image, what you do is go up to Image Mode index color. This option won't be available though if your design is in CMYK, so let's I'll show you what to do if it's in CMYK mode. Okay, so CMYK, I'm going to go to image mode, RGB color, image mode, indexed color. You have to go in that order or else it's not going to do it. Okay, so then it brings up this little indexed window, indexed color window. Um, you want to make sure dither is going to say none, matte will say none, um, and we're going to click on the custom option. Um, I always, since I do this a lot, I create an action right here, indexed color, Be since I do it all the time, and I have it set to be F2. So all I have to do is click my F2 key, and it pops up and it even is set to have only one color, which is white. So you can click the preview off button and it will show you your image. And you want to leave that preview off while we adjust color. Okay, so again, you just go up to image, mode, indexed color. All right, let me go back to the one color thing. Okay, so what you want to do is click custom. Let's get rid of those this over. Okay, so this is, all these boxes right here are where your theoretical colors are going to go. Um, let's add some colors just so I can show you how to get rid of some. That's too many. Do that. Click OK. Okay, so if you open up your indexed color window and a whole bunch of colors are in here and you want to get rid of them, you just have to hold command, the command key and you can click on any one you want and it will get rid of those. Um, I normally just click on the, the second one and it kind of just moves them all down. And you're always going to have this color, you can't get rid of the first one. Um, if you'll notice, you'll see a transparent background here. Let's click on that first square and then, excuse me, we're going to hold down Option and click on this first square and it makes it transparent. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then let's just go ahead and separate the colors out. So we'll click on the second box, and I'd like to do the background first. Uh, just makes it easier to find out what's happening in the file if I have to open it up again. So let's do the clouds. Let's do the, the grassy stuff. Let's do the shadows. So you just have to click on each box and then click on the color. If you're in older versions of Photoshop or the Adobe Suite, I'm using CC. Um, you might not be able to adjust the color just by clicking on stuff. You'll either click on this area right here, just click on there, and then click color, and that might work. Or you might have to hold down command while you're clicking, and that will help you change color. So try those two options if it doesn't end up working for you just to be able to click around. Okay, so that's the background and the little shadowy texture. Let's do the reds. So let's start with this pink. Click OK. I'm clicking Enter on my keyboard instead of pressing OK. It's just quicker, but you can always go over here and click OK. But that takes a long time, and I don't like taking a long time. So I'll get the pink. Let's do the red. Um, yellow. Let's do these blues. There's going to be an issue here because it's kind of a... My file is a little transparent and this um, crystal ball. So we're going to click on this blue and I kind of I want this little area 
that's going over the dark part of the deer's body to show up. So I'm going to click that and select this color, the darker color. If you need to, you can always zoom in and find the color you need if it's really tiny. Um, then by zooming in, you can actually see, see the hard edges. There isn't any anti-aliasing or fading into the other colors using, you know, lighter uh, browns or lighter or darker yellows. If you click that button, it will be all muddled and contaminated. Okay, so we picked that darker blue. And what else? Let's move on to the cream, this light brown, the medium brown. Whoops. Uh, medium brown. Okay, and then darkest brown right under this person's head. I think it's... I think it's a girl bear. She has eyelashes. All right, and then what else do we need? I'm missing something, I just know it. Okay, oh, the whites and the blacks. All right, so pick a white color. I just kind of move it on up. And for blacks, when you move the black, uh, an Illustrator file over to Photoshop, the blacks aren't totally black, so don't just move the little picker down to the very bottom here. You wanna, click on the black and see how it's not black it kind of it looks like it but you want to make sure that you do select the blacks because if you do have a darker color in here I'll show you what happens if you don't select the black like if I just leave it blank for example so click OK and we're gonna preview it the black takes on the characteristic of the next closest dark color um, and it'll do that if you have navy or dark purple. It might pick one of those colors instead of making it black, and you might not want that. So let's go back in. So just click on the palette custom again. Oh, and unclick preview. Custom. And let's add the black in. Click OK. And clicking OK here on this window doesn't set it in stone yet. It's when you click here it does. So click preview. That looks pretty good. I didn't really. I don't see any other color changes that I missed. You can click this on and off to see if you missed any colors. That's the purpose of that. Like if you miss this color here, the lighter brown, it might change to the cream or this darker medium brown instead. Or it could even change the yellow depending on what the computer thinks is closest. So we'll click OK. You know that's that's a thing. And let's open this little. The layers and when we index it you can see that if you had any layers they're flattened and it'll say index here and that'll be a little lock icon and you can't add any extra layers it's just flat it's just what's gonna be um, so let's change colors um, let's bring up this palette just double click on it since it's already a PSD if it's not a PSD you'll want to drag this in to Photoshop and it'll open up. Okay, let's collapse that again. Okay, so in order to change color, you go somewhere else. So you go to image, mode, color table. Now I have the set as F3, since again, I, I have the action shortcut for index color where I just hit F2. Um, but I also don't like to go up to mode and in the, or table color here. So anyway, I have it set to F3, so I'll click F3. And it brings that up and I can just exit, F3, exit, F3. See how that is? You guys are gonna be great at this. All right, I kinda wanted to make this palette more of a nighttime disco party where the forest fair animals are having a really good time. Okay, so we're going to start with the ground. We just have to click on the color. And when you click on a transparent color, it will change it to white. Um, let's see. Let's just go ahead and start. So click on each square that you want to change. And then click on the color up here that you want to change it to. You can pick it from any document as long as it's in Illustrator. Okay, let's make that that dark. And then we're gonna share it as green. Let me move this over, it's kinda far away. 
this green will share a screen with the clouds, I think. You can also kind of adjust in this window here. I like that a little bit better. So it's not sharing a screen anymore. It's a little dirtier, less saturated. And then we'll make this light pink, a lilac. And you can see it changing here as long as you have this preview thing checked. Oops, <laughs> I just tried clicking here instead of on this. Okay. And then we'll make this uh, more fuchsia. And the red, let's go here. And this yellow, I decided, I don't really like this yellow. Let's go a little bluer, or more lime, I guess you could say. But I usually like saying red, blue, or green. Like, if you're in the, the red, you don't want to say more purple, you say bluer because that's just the primary color. Okay, and so we're gonna make this a little more lime. It's pretty good. A little more, yeah, I don't want it too bright because it's gonna be pretty bright anyway against the background. Um, and the blues, I'll show you a fun trick. Okay, so there's like this gradient of blues happening right here, the lightest to darkest. Um, so what you're going to do is click and hold on the first one, then drag over to the last and then release your mouse or your Wacom tablet like I'm using. And we're going to make it this purple color. So just click there and click OK. And you'll see that all of these colors just change to the same color. So there's no variance. Um, but now we're see how it says color picker last color. So this is what the last color is going to be. Um, and just make it a little darker to go along with how it was, the, the format. So click OK. And you can see here that it changed the middle one to an in-between color between the lightest and the darkest. And you can go back and change, you know, if you don't like it to be. And then all this is just this screen here you want that to be a little lighter or change the darkest you have to go back and adjust but that's a fast way if you know that your colors are going to be sharing like a, a gradient hue or shades I guess you can just click and hold and drag and then we'll change the creams I'm not gonna change too much I like that for the most part Let's do that. And we're going to do the same thing. Since I just selected this new color, we'll just click on that and drag over. And then click OK. And that's the last color here. And then there we go. That looks decent. And then we'll make the black black. Just drag that down. Or we can make it white. That just looks a little creepy. Let's leave it black. And here you just unclick the preview when that's what it looked like. And here's the new one. Okay, so that looks pretty good. There, this part, her eyeballs bother me. She's looking a little, a little creepy there. So I'm gonna go to the magic wand tool. So click W or shift W to get to this selecty one. And you wanna make sure um, anti-alias is unchecked and contiguous is checked. If you unclick, well, because this is what contiguous does. So click there, and it only selects this little area of attached blue color, and see how it misses this little blip between the eyelashes? And if I, let's deselect that, Command D, and then uncheck contiguous, it's gonna select all of the same blues here. And my tolerance is currently 10, so if I clicked 50, this is gonna be probably going to select, see it selected all this range of blues within 50 pixels. So to be exact with index, you might want to change the tolerance to one. And if you're trying to change all of these colors to say, and now I clicked my eyedropper tool to say this color, the aqua, you just, there you go. And it changes that screen to aqua. So there's no more dark blue screen or dark purple screen undo. I'm going to go back and change her eye color, click contiguous, 
Let's get in that little spot. Oh, and you can see here that I have the, the magic wand and the little plus sign. It's because I have this option selected. So I can just click this and it will only select that if I click. Um, but I like to keep it like that. And you can just keep it on the regular one. And if you want to add, you, put, you hold down shift. Or you can hold down option to subtract it. So it's plus, plus, plus. All right, and let's make her eyeballs this lighter purple and do option delete. That will um, make it the foreground color doing option delete or you can do command delete to make it be the background color which would be white so let's do let's do command delete Ooh, no option delete there you go magic so that looks like a pretty fun forest fair party if i do say so they're having like a disco dance it's probably adding some fireflies or something to this that'd be kind of fun all right, so that's essentially how it works. And then you can just save as a PSD. And um, since it's, you can't edit the layers anymore, well, easily at least, like you can probably select this little, this little dude or chick, I guess I can say, and kind of move her around. And then you have to fix this little area again. But you know, you don't want to do that. You mostly want to get it set in stone with how you like the layout. And you can send this to art directors or whoever and they can go off of this for your color inspiration. So yeah, that's about it. I hope you like it. Uh, get to work and make something in index mode.